like to call to order this meeting of the Montgomery County Commission for October 18th, 2017. Please note for the record that all commissioners are present. If you would, please stand for some moment of silent meditation and the pledge to the flag. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, Renetta. Good morning. Consent and approval, please. <clears throat> We have 16 exonerations for $4,532.84. One request to create a statement for $6.30. We have vouchers for General County, $390,587.96. Whole severance, $7,938.41. 911, $3,941.36. Chestnut Ridge Park, $1,756.93. Camp Muffley, 65026, Mason Dixon Park, 280480, Assessor's Valuation, 3265.79, Purchasing Card Vouchers for General County, 24129.15, Chestnut Ridge Park, 4412.21, Camp Muffley, 479.80, Mason Dixon Park, $1014.55. <coughs> For a voucher total of 452 We have position vacancies for boards and authorities, the Western Board of Zoning Appeals, Planning Commission, Long County Historic Landmarks Commission, Abandoned Dilapidated Property Enforcement Agency, and Deputy Sheriff Civil Service Commission. We have fiduciary orders for October 18, 2017, and the third quarter status report for Fiduciary Commissioner Lynn Crane. Second. And properly moved and seconded for approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Introduction of new employees. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, <coughs> Mark uh, couldn't be here this morning, so um, I've, uh, this time we're seeking approval uh, from the commission for the hiring of uh, Ms. Sandra Rose uh, for personal property uh, tax deputy upstairs. Uh, she'd be working at the assessor's office. Uh, her first day was uh, Monday uh, this, this week, and she came back, so that's always good. Um, so, that's a good sign. Yeah, um, so she'd be full-time, um, uh, eligible for benefits uh, with um, uh, probationary period of 90 days okay. and I have a letter here so. move for approval second it's been properly moved and seconded for approval all in favor uh, aye well, thank you and welcome aboard welcome and welcome it's back very nice to have you again <laughs> yes thank you back to work yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> thank you are there any other introductions of new employees yes <clears throat> The chef is at a task force meeting, so I'm able to be here. Thank you. So I will present. <coughs> Thank you. We're presenting for your approval today a part time temporary uh, <coughs> position to be filled by Vicki Lipscomb. Um, we added her as of the 16th, but today is actually her first day, so we don't know if she'll come back tomorrow, but, uh, as, as in the assessor's office. But um, we are hiring her, as I said, temporary, part-time, um, hourly rate of 1088, and she is going to help get us organized. We, ha we were slammed this year, and so we have uh, several bins of, res of tax bills that actually did that came back to us. So she's going to help us find addresses and get those mailed out to the proper people. So we needed some help. Move for approval. Second. And properly moved and seconded for approval. All in favor? Aye. 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 And welcome aboard. Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yes. Would there be any other <coughs> introductions of new employees? <coughs> Hearing none, we'll move on to comments from the public. And we are now open for comments from the public. If you wish to speak, you have 
approximately three minutes. Hearing none <laughs> and seeing none, we will close comments from the public. Colleen, do we have grants? Yes, I surely we do. do. Good. <laughs> Um, the first one I have is the Governor's Highway Safety Program, the Distracted Driving Grant in the amount of $1,310.21. The next one is another Governor's Highway Safety Program, um, Impaired Driving, for $7,360.01. Then I have um, the JJDP Voices 2 Grant in the amount of $2,032.82. And there's also another JJDP grant. This is the DMC in the amount of $5,645.50. Um, I have the Day Report Center in the amount of $13,802.59. And VOCA in the amount of $5,055.68. Move for approval. Second with a question. Uh, the, moved in, the grant that you have for um, the last one you said. Okay. No, okay. no, the one before okay. that. Okay. Day Report Center. Day Report Center. The, is that the one that says that we're only charging $12 a square foot? No, so that's family another issue court. that I... That's family, family court. court. That's family, family court. court. Okay, but I, I saw... That's just for... Their okay. little room. That's okay. their oh, that's for the, their space. That's, okay, that's what I need. That. That's the VOCA grant that they. It's an in kind. It's an in kind match okay. that they have to provide, and and the prosecuting attorney has to provide a statement every month of what the in kind is for for office space. Okay, my only concern is that <coughs> it says twelve dollars, and we don't agree it's twelve. We're saying twenty four. I just want to make sure it doesn't hurt us. It with doesn't our court hurt case. us because we're way over our in kind okay. anyway. Okay. Okay, that's fine. I just want to make sure. Okay, it's been Thank properly you. moved and seconded for Colleen, approval. Sorry. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right, next uh, we have a public hearing of uh, the Region 6 Planning and Development Council regarding the submission of a regional application to include Taylor, Doddridge, Harrison, Marion, Monongalia, and Preston County for the Community Development Block Grant in the amount of $125,000. Uh, we'll first hear on the presentation. Good morning. I, uh, Good morning. And, and thank you for your service. Uh, it is greatly appreciated, and thank you all for showing up. My name is David Gibson. I am with Region 6 um, Planning and Development Council. May I bring this up? Yes, this yes will, please. This will start a, a sign-in sheet for sure. just, just for the meeting itself. Thank you. And whoever wants to sign back here, you're more than welcome. Um, I'll try to stay on the written word because if I get off, we're in trouble. We're all in trouble. So, um, the purpose of this public hearing is to prevent information on the United <coughs> States Housing and Urban Development's Community Development Block Grant Program and a proposed regional uh, CDBG Community Development Block Grant uh, project to update the Region Six Planning and Development Council Strategic Broadband Plan that was developed in 2014 and is this document here which I believe has been shared with the commissioners. Um, uh, first, uh, please allow me to explain the Community Development Block Grant. Um, it is a program that provides communities with resources to address a wide range of unique community development needs, and it began in 1974. The program is one of the longest continuously running programs through the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. Um, the primary objective of Title I of HUD uh, is, as, amended, as amended is the development of viable urban communities by providing decent housing and suitable living environment and expanding economic development opportunities, principally for persons of low and moderate income. The state does administer uh, the CDBG and and they are awarded those funds which in turn they go around and award grants in smaller units to general local government such as a municipality and or in our case a county commission here they carry out community development activities for HUD fiscal year um, fiscal year I'm sorry 2017 West Virginia was allocated approximately 12 million five hundred thousand the national objectives, uh, the funds may be granted to eligible units to local government if they typically achieve one of three national objectives, and they are funds must benefit 51% of low and moderate income persons, 
Funds must be used to prevent or eliminate slums or blight, or, and that's an or, uh, funds must address community development needs having a particular urgency, and that's kind of where we're hitting on today's meeting. Eligible projects that we're running through with this is the broadband planning grants for municipalities and counties and regionally, and we're shooting for the amount Mr. Hawkins mentioned of $125,000. It's, it's up to that. We're, we're doing the regional, the six county region, and we can hopefully get between seventy-five dollars and $125,000. Uh, broadband construction progress, pro projects, which would be next, you know, we're looking down the road, are eligible for up to $300,000 per project. And typically, Region 6, our, our niche has been water and sewer projects, and the maximum awards there have been $1.5 million. Uh, general community development and planning grants with a maximum of 500000 for general community development and 100000 for planning, and economic development with business commitment with a maximum of $1.25 million. So again, those are what they look as eligible projects. With broadband planning grants, there is no low or moderate income requirement necessary since these funds will be used for planning and not for actual broadband construction projects. Citizen participation, a grantee which is either, well in this case is going to be a county, must develop and follow a detailed plan that provides for and encourages citizen participation. This is an integral part of the process and emphasizes participation by persons of low or moderate income, particularly residents of predominantly low and moderate income neighborhoods, slum or blighted areas and areas in which the grantee proposes to use CDBG funds. The plan must provide citizens with the following, reasonable and timely access to local meetings, an opportunity to review proposed activities and program performance, provide for timely written answers to written complaints and grievances, and identify how the needs of non-English speaking residents will be met in the case of public hearings where a significant number of non-English speaking residents can be reasonably expected to, to participate. Excuse me. As part of the citizen participation process, two public hearings must be held for all first-time applications. The first public hearing is for the purpose of explaining the Community Development Block Grant Program, which is what I'm doing now, and I hope everybody's staying awake, okay, and eligibility requirements. The second public hearing brings together the community to discuss possible various projects. For applications that are being resubmitted, only one public hearing is required. A resolution by the unit of local government to submit an application cannot be signed until after the public hearing requirements have been f fulfilled, which is what we're doing here. Any activity may be funded in whole or part with CDBG funds only if all the following criteria are met. Each activity must be eligible under Section 105 of the Act, includes acquisition, disposition of real estate, public facilities and improvements, clearance activities of buildings and housing, provision of public services, urban renewal, relocation, payments, assistance, or permanently and tempor temporarily relocated persons, or nonprofit entities to carry out eligible neighborhood revitalization or economic development activities. And each activity must fulfill one of the three national objectives that I mentioned earlier, and each activity must meet environmental and clearance procedures. Because CDBG funds are available this year for broadband projects, Region 6 proposed to update the aforementioned strategic broadband plan. This update will identify areas where broadband exists, areas with low or no access to broadband service, what type of services are available, and what type of projects that may have the opportunity to apply for future funding to construct the necessary infrastructure to provide the service. So that, that's the meat and potatoes of it right there. In applying for a regional broadband planning grant, one county is required to be the sponsor or grantee for the project. Because the deadline for 2017 broadband applications is October 30th, the Taylor County Commission recently met and approved to be the grantee and will take the lead in initiating this grant. In order for this to be a regional endeavor, HUD CDBG requires that participating counties also hold one public hearing, that's what we're doing today, to discuss the purpose of the program and the intent of the application. The counties that are proposed with Taylor, uh, or to, to, to participate in this plan update with Taylor are Dardridge, Harrison, Marion, Montegalia, and Preston. 
This public hearing today in Mon County will satisfy the citizen participation requirement along with the public hearings, all participating county commissions are required to approve and sign an updated community development and housing needs plan, and a, which I have here, and a <coughs> memorandum of understanding, which I also have here. Since the Taylor County Commission is the sponsoring county, only it will be required to update and approve its citizens participation plan, which will identify the participating counties for this broadband planning grant. Once an application is submitted to the West Virginia Development Office, it will be reviewed by the West Virginia Broadband Council for recommendation for approval. The Broadband Council is similar in its function to the West Virginia IJDC, if you guys are familiar with that, um, and that stands for Infrastructure and Jobs Development Council for proposed water and sewer projects, except that the Broadband Council will review applications after submission, whereas the IJDC reviews water and sewer projects prior to submission of CDBG applications. So all we're doing is applying with this uh, information today. There's no guarantee that we'll be selected to have the planning grant. The state of West Virginia has expanded use of CDBG funds that now includes roughly 700,000 of the state's allocation to be used for broadband projects and remaining CDBG funds for water and sewer projects and economic development and housing. Region 6 Planning and Development Council has uh, provided the assist or will provide the assistance needed to put together a HUD CDBG application and all associated requirements. Okay. That's, That's good stuff. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Now, do we have anybody here uh, who would like to speak on behalf uh, of this presentation uh, in, in favor? Hearing none, we will move to see if there are anybody who wishes to speak in opposition to this matter. <laughs> Hearing none, then we will not be necessary to have any rebuttal. Uh, are there any questions that uh, may be asked from uh, this board? No, sir. I, just a couple <coughs> of questions. So <clears throat> what's the timing of the expected award? That, that's a very good question. We've been told December. 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 So that's, that was the rush. We found out about this in September. And I, I, you know, I apologize because this is last minute. We're October, what, 18th? And, we're looking at having the submission into Charleston by October 30th, but we've been told December. Okay, and the state is setting aside about 700,000 for 700, this? 700,000. You guys are going after, we are going after 125. Right, right. And it's for, for planning, so you'll develop some uh, plan for broadband for the area. Yes, and, and what, what we would do under, under that circumstance is we would hire, or, or we would uh, advertise for, I, I'm more comfortable talking about like the water and sewer projects. Yes. So you advertise for engineers mm -hmm. when, when, you, when that project is getting started. In this case, we'd advertise for somebody with broadband experience to, to get that started. I'm more curious about the end product. So whenever, assuming you get the, the uh, grant, then you would have some sort of deliverable from this that you would share yes. at that time? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I also think this is being bandied about on the national level yes. for uh, actual funding mm -hmm. of the broadband yeah uh, I believe you're right because you know actually because it's HUD's money yes right so it comes with the federal it's, yes you know backing mm -hmm. any other question of the applicant hearing none uh, we will close this public hearing okay thank you thank okay. you for coming uh, I appreciate uh, it. and Point but order. then we need yes. a couple of documents signed. Do we need a motion to approve signature of those documents? I would. I believe so. Yes. I'd like to make a motion that the uh, president be. A, is it just signed by the president or the whole commission? It, no, it is just signed by, uh, yeah, the president. And giving yes. the president approval to sign the participation plan and the MOU as described. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded to allow me to sign. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Right. If you'll present it, I'll sign it right now. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have to do this for every county? <coughs> we're, we're the only one for the region that has to do that. Actually, no, we, we're going in with every county. Oh, yeah. Today is Harrison, Marion, and Maud. Okay. <laughs> so you got to get going. Get a copy. Can we make sure that we I, I do leave a copy here. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Two. Two. 
Here's a tip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Signature and then we'll move on. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Well, yep. Thank you for thank coming you. and explaining it. Yeah, well, <laughs> and I have it all down so Ben can write it all <laughs> word for word. Yes. Thank you all for being so kind and not too many questions because yeah. I'm, I'm a rookie. Uh, well, you did fine. But uh, public speaking, I'll get out of the way here. And, uh, That's okay. You need one of these as well. Yes. Oh, no. No. That's fine. That makes sense. Yeah, yes. that's fine. Yeah. 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 yeah, we'll bring him forward. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we will move on to a presentation. Uh, when we began uh, discussing the courthouse square renovation, it was brought up. Uh, the question was there a county flag and uh, the answer was no so it was decided among commission that we would have a contest to design a county flag so we have now county flag I would like uh, mr. Uh, I think mr. Andrew Riley please if he would come forward uh, and uh, for this and we would have you then uh, describe what we have here yes all right, so uh, I felt that Monongalia County was a simple and yet elegant county. I, I'm very proud of it. Uh, I was born. I was. A, I was born here and spent all my life here, and I really wanted to express that simple elegance. Uh, the blue bars. Can you? Uh, do you mind I holding can. it up? I, it's all the description. The blue bars uh, on the top and the bottom of the flag. I. I really feel like the skies of Mon County are they're very pure and untainted, and I really I wanted to make those quite uh, large and very. Not tall enough to have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Loud and uh, stand. Okay, you're saying <laughs> I realize I am short. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. And uh, <laughs> anyway, the 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 what was it? The yellow with gold mm -hmm. uh, inclines emerging from the blue. Those really. It represents the rolling hills of Mon County, of the Appalachian Plateau that this county is uh, located on. Uh, the blue spikes emerging from the uh, the county seal and above and below the 1776. I really, the rivers and streams, they're beautiful, and I I wanted them to represent the beautiful rivers and streams just piercing through the valleys and uh, hills of this beautiful county. And that's that's it. <laughs> Quite a simple design. If you would come forward, uh, we do have uh, not only the presentation, but a check as well. And if you would like to bring those who uh, accompanied you, yes. uh, and please introduce them, uh, if you would. And then we'll get a picture or two. If you want to say your name in the speaker, so that way they hear, say it, so you can hear it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, my name is Sam Burnett, and I'm the art teacher at Morgantown High School. And I want to thank the commission for the opportunity to include um, all artists in Montague County uh, to participate in this design. Um, we appreciate it. And he did a bang up job. We're proud of him at Morgantown High. Thank you. My name is Jen Koncheski. I'm one of the assistant principals, and we're so proud of him. <laughs> And I'm the proud mom, Shelly <laughs> Riley. <laughs> uh, didn't, you know, he's very quiet about his assignments at school, so when I got the call from the teacher, it was a huge surprise and such a pleasant surprise, and he's a very humble, humble young man. So uh, I know it takes a lot for him to stand up here, but I'm so incredibly proud, and we'll be proud that this flag will be flying at the card house for years to come, and maybe even little middle schoolers who, who uh, study the history of the flag mm -hmm. will be able to see his name. So <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Please come forward. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get us all up here. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, here's the most important part. Colleen. Colleen. We get out of school and work. <laughs> Colleen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You have a camera? Okay. All right. I'll put the check in. Okay. There's a problem there, so you can do with that what you wish. Okay? Okay. Okay. 
you fit. All right. And congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Can we get you in there? Some big chairs, man. Yeah. We went all in. <laughs> Got everybody. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Very impressive. Uh, really is. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an honor to. When we when we selected these, I, I can assure you that we were not looking at the back to see uh, the submissions, and uh, you know, and so it was really a great surprise. First of all, to find out that it was you know one of our one of our students rather than an adult. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, admittedly, some I could tell were students because they were done in crayon. <laughs> but still, <coughs> still, the artwork that was mine. Yes, <laughs> the artwork is all appreciated as well. I mean, for all 85 applicants, really, yes. we were very impressed. I mean, they were really. Uh, it was a hard decision. I'm Thank you. And, and then Andrew, as uh, it said, I was blown away, and that's what when I called Sam up, I said it wasn't only the design, but what it meant, and you know what it represented for Mon County. I just thought it was just, I didn't realize when people draw maps, they they actually, you know, had meaning. So I mean, hopefully, the one other thing that I know Sam and I had talked about was we're going to see how many flags we might get, and we're hopefully that we could give them, to, or the schools would buy them and put them in the schools and I and I know that Ma, Morgantown High definitely will definitely get one I mean that's a definite and thank you very much and, and Ed made an interesting point we didn't pay attention to who submitted it yeah because I had no idea that I, I know this family very well uh, I'm proud of them for uh, you know just a small little bit of their life that I've I've known them and Dr. Riley who is uh, Andrew's dad was a MBA professor of mine oh, really? and uh, a lot of the a lot of things that you you guys marvel, marvel at is because of him, <laughs> yeah. what he taught me in the MBA program. So uh, yeah. it's a, it's a great family. I'm very proud of you, Shelley and, and Tom Dick. And we family. hope that you'll be able to be here when we raise the flag for oh, those yes. times. So that that's what we would like to do too. <laughs> it's, been, it's, it's been very big news at Morgantown High. It, the, the flag's been flown. I mean, up on all the teleprompters in, in the lunch room, and the kids have, <laughs> have offered him uh, congratulations. Congratulations all That's week long, and <laughs> as quiet and unassuming as he is, he's he stepped up to the plate for yeah. this. And, and we uh, appreciate it. He's basically Thank made history. Yeah, I mean, this is yeah. history. Mon County history now. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll get used to public speaking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I promise you will. Yeah. Maybe at some point the flag can be uh, made available for purchase. I yes, and that's what citizens who are already saying yes. that they yeah. want one for their homes. And so. you know, it's good when on Facebook. It's been all positive comments. Yes. So that, that is looked. a rare. That <laughs> is, me, so you've done. So you know you've done your. I, had, I was ready. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank I know you, you have to go Thank back to the school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please note the applause was for him. The yeah. commission usually does not get applause, and we're not used to it, and we'll not expect it in the future. Okay. And we know if you have to get back to school. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah, welcome. You can, you're welcome. You're more than welcome to stay. You're more than welcome to stay. Yes, we, we know that. Thank you, Jim, for coming. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next we have the certification of the election results for the road bond amendment. You're actually going to have to postpone that. Yeah, we're going to have to postpone 11, 13, that. 13, is it? 18. Okay. 11, 18. All right, so we, we'll will just, have, yeah. we will have that postponed at this time. Okay? Correspondence, Renata. Do we have correspondence? Um, we really, we have a few things. Yes. Um, there is in your admin folder, if you can refer to that. Uh, hold on, let me find it. Pardon? Oh, hold on, just a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I must have exited out of it. Okay. Oh, good. I'm glad you do that on the okay. computer. That yeah. makes me feel better. Okay. Um, the first is a uh, letter from um, the prosecuting attorney, Perry, uh, to Christopher. Um, she is part, their office is part of a coordinated community response team that's part of the WVU safety grant, um, the Mon County sexual assault response team, and the Stop Violence Against Women Act. Uh, <coughs> through our participation with these groups, we have been asked to lead a peer advocate training session. Previously, we had conducted this training session in the Mon County Courthouse and most recently the Justice Center. Training session for this semester is scheduled for Monday, November the 13th beginning at 6 o'clock and ending at 8.50, and we are requesting your approval to again conduct this training at the Justice Center. So we just need to give them the go-ahead that they are. Sure. Do we uh, even have a motion, or just can we, we can just say, yeah, unless someone complains. Yes. Fine. 
Okay. Or obviously fun. This. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second is a letter from Ethan Moore at the Clay District Fair Association. Um, it's a pretty long letter. I don't know if you want me to read it. Um, but it's regarding their project at the community building there. The summation will be sufficient. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, um, it'll be available for the record. Well, I didn't read it all last night, so I don't know. Um, From the summary of what I can, under, what, yeah. what I can uh, deduce, he's saying that they've received, a, the association has pledged an additional 20000 Um so they they've got a total committed amount of fifty thousand of their estimated sixty thousand to seventy thousand uh, dollar need for the project, and they're requesting um, us to assist them with the additional ten thousand to meet their goal. I know when they talked a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago, I thought he was asking for anywhere from to up to thirty thousand. Right. So uh, I, I think he's clarifying that. Ten is is uh, what they're what they're interested in. Uh, yeah, and I would like to see how we could do that, whether it be in the economic development, because we had asked him to go out and get the funding, and he now got the commitment right. of all the funding. We so have we have submitted some yeah. funding already. Yeah, I think not, five to ten thousand yeah. already. They've done a lot of work yeah. with this. Yeah. They've gone out and they've secured property from the school board. I mean, right. they're they've they've they did done their due diligence. Yeah. So. Well, if, if nothing else, uh, we could we still see uh, as the possibility of a loan uh, if, you know, if, if there's not a full grant. So. Well, when we last met, um, he was going to arrange a tour so he can actually show us yes. the project. Yes. And you, then you had we, previously pledged 10000 10, yes. yes. out of the uh, coal reallocation for community development. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... He needs another ten thousand on top of that. Well, could we, could we you're saying. Let's, let's Let, could we do consider giving him another five with a five thousand loan to be discussed? You know, would that be at least they could get the money up front so they could build everything? Okay. Is that a possibility, or do you want to do all ten thousand? You know. Well, I would suggest that we need to have a discussion with him if he was still okay. interested in giving us that tour so we can actually yes. see what they're doing. Okay. And then we can have a follow-on discussion. Yes. Sure. I, I agree with that. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. We'll, we'll wait for him to uh, get in touch with us and uh, and have that uh, and have that tour. Renata, you can ask him to just, through you, <coughs> yes. go ahead and just schedule us. Okay. Does that okay. make sense? All the other yeah. stuff after that first paragraph is... Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's okay. it's stuck. I know that's why I didn't read it's the whole stuck. thing. <laughs> that's right. We'll tell Ethan to be a little bit briefer uh, in, in the future. Brevity. Right? All right. Uh, next. Okay. Any other correspondence? Um, the only other item that I have, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the proclamation that you all read at the Mason Dixon right. Park on Sunday at yes. their celebration, um, that just needs to be put into record. Okay. So I don't know if you want me to read it or. Do you want to no, we it? I don't think the... Just put it in the record yeah. of it. Okay. Okay. That's it. That's all. All right. Okay. Any unfinished business? <clears throat> no. Hearing none, we will move to new business. First, consideration of a loan agreement with the Stewardstown Community Council in the amount of $4,300 to be repaid within 24 months to complete the roof replacement at the Stewardstown Community Building. Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded for approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next, to consider approval of the President to sign the Trust Link application and designation form for West Banco Bank Incorporated to allow the Commission and its designees to access online bank statements for the University Town Center 2017 Series A Corporate Trust Accounts. Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded for approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next, to consider approval of an application outlining procedures for organizations wishing to apply for funding from the County Commission for community events to be held at the Monongalia County Ballpark. Move for approval with discussion? Yes, second with discussion. Go ahead. Um, my question is where do they contact us right. for this, or do we put it up on a website or something like that? Um, I, I would just refer this application to them if we get anybody contacting okay. us for okay. the funds. And then going forward, once we get our website up to date, maybe this is a, an area yes. where we can have it out yes. there where people are free to right. go and get it. Yes. It's been properly moved and seconded for approval. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Consideration of appointments to the Mason-Dixon Historical Park Advisory Board. Um, we had two positions that had expired, and then um, 
they had both submitted uh, the the current um, participants had had submitted letters that they wanted to serve another term. Uh, Ethan Moore and Charles Kraft. Um, and then we also had another application from a young lady that's been volunteering at the park, um, Nicole Lawfrey. Okay. Um, so that board is eligible for up to seven yes, uh, members. Sure. Right now, there's currently five, can, with the two that wants to that would like to uh, be reappointed. So if you want to appoint an additional member, you can. Okay. Uh, move for approval with discussion. Okay. Second. That's properly moved and seconded. The two individuals that had been serving, obviously they've been serving and, and providing uh, uh, a value to that board, so I would uh, obviously uh, suggest that uh, we reappoint them. The other individual is an individual that lives in a neighborhood, lives close, and has done a lot of it, um, volunteer work for the park, so I think it would also be a good addition. Okay. It's been properly moved and seconded for uh, reappointment, and the new appointee, all in favor? All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Consideration of requisition number 13 for the University Town Center Economic Opportunity Development District sub account. Okay. Move for approval. Yes. Second with discussion. Okay. Just We're a note. Moved that and seconded. This is a normal uh, requisition for debt service. Yes, yes. this is for debt payment to the debt service uh, $407,043.55. So, okay. had a good month. All right, good. It's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Uh, All right. Thank you. To consider approval of requisition number one for development district number three, Maple Drive project from the administrative fund account. This is for annual trustee fees payable to United Bank for the Maple Drive improvement project um, in the amount of $2,500. Move for approval. Second. Been properly moved and second for approval. All in favor? Uh, All right. Thank you. Lastly, to consider setting a public hearing date for the proposed Montgomery County Subdivision and Land Development Ordinance as submitted by the Montgomery County Planning Commission. Move for approval with discussion. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded for uh, discussion. Obviously, the discussion is uh, the parameters around the date and the availability of the document, which we um, will need to let people know where they can access the document. Um, the code calls for 30 days from publication, from public notice. So what dates would that? Um, I, I will be able to submit that to the paper today. Okay. Um, and pending what they say, it's, we should be able to get that published on Friday. Okay. Um, Friday would be October the 20th. And then, um, so a month from then would be the 24th which is, we're actually closed that day. Day before Thanksgiving. Yeah, so if we want to have it on the next commission meeting, that would be uh, Wednesday the 29th, November the 29th. Okay. Um, right. I guess my question to you would be, do you want to have just one public hearing or would you want to do two? Mm -hmm. Typically we've done one in the daytime and one in the evening for issues such as this, but well, we should follow precedent if that's what we've done in the past. So on that day, we'd have two meetings? Yes. I, I would suggest that, Anna, but no, I'll listen so to So we can have colleagues. one at um, have one at 10 o'clock and then have another one at 6. Yeah. No, will the one be at 10 o'clock or will we do our regular business and then make it at 10? Well, it's, I usually publish it at, at 10 o'clock or as soon after as may be heard. Okay. Okay. And then the last thing as far as availability of the document, it's available. Um, we have, I've made copies already. Uh, we will send one to the county clerk's office so they can have one on file. Um, and then we will have one available in the uh, commission office. And then the, it'll be available at the planning commission as it well. It is, yes, that is moncpc.org. So moncpc.org, if you go there, you will find uh, the full uh, ordinance uh, as it was submitted by the Planning Commission. And it, it is only a Class 1 ad, so it only has to be published one time. One time. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I don't have any more questions. Okay. Uh, as we know, this has been a long, ongoing, and very controversial situation. I will not vote against the public hearing because I think you know we have you that is a requirement. I am very concerned 
that we have not really looked at this or made decisions or realized the complexity of this situation. Um, I'm not going to go in detail about my questions yet, but I do have one big concern, and that is how do we get the developers and landowners to get this information guide? Putting on the website is probably not going to be enough since when people see what this actually does, this changes the entire county structure. And I have a real concern about this. So I think we have to do more because the copies, I think it's 30 pages and 70 pages of definitions. I mean, this, so I don't, it's something, if, we, if it's on the internet, can it be down? You know what I'm saying? They should be able to pull it up. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So we can download it so that way we can, because I believe this is really important. Um, I, I, I'm just very concerned with this entire situation. But as I, I realize, you know, you wanted to have the public hearing, and, and I believe it's important the public have input into this. Okay. It's been properly moved and seconded. We will be setting a public hearing of the 29th for this with two meetings, one in the morning uh, at commission time and one in the evening at 6 o'clock. So. Tom, to answer your question, you go there and you click on it and you can and download it. Okay, yeah. now is that the entire thing and the definitions? Yeah, it's a 52-page document. Okay, good. That's what I wanted to make sure. Thank you. Okay. That's helpful. All right. And I agree with your comments that this is an important issue. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, this goes to my overall comment. We have mm -hmm. these uh, uh, boards and authorities that work on our behalf, uh, and they have brought this up a number of times, and it's been rehashed. Uh, it, we, it, they deserve to at least something they've passed to at least have us uh, hear it. Okay, that's fine. And I agree, and I understand that. I agree with that. It has been properly moved and seconded for this hearing to be held on the 29th with two meetings. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, any other new business? No, sir. Hearing none, reports from elected officials. Kelly? I'm just requesting that you place the sheriff on the agenda for next week to present the suspension list for our tax lien sale. Okay. So moved. Thank you. Second. So moved. Second. second. <laughs> okay, it's been properly <laughs> moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Any other reports from elected officials? Hearing none, reports from county commissioners. Tom? Uh, all three of us went to an amazing ceremony and weekend of the 250th anniversary of the Mason-Dixon line. I, I, I can't say enough to Pete, to pa is it Zap Zapatka. Zapatka and JR and the board out there that did an amazing job. I mean, it was packed, weather was fantastic, it, the rain held off, and it was a very educational and historical uh, weekend, and I'm just really glad that all three of us were able to be a part of it. Uh, the only other issue is what I'm hoping is that the three of us are working in cooperation with the city council with this new bus depot situation. I, I think that the new city council may not realize that if the levy wasn't there, that the county paid for the majority of the funding for the bus transit. So I just hope that we are working together in sync, come up with a plan. I understand the purpose, but we need to have a plan before we suddenly move forward, and I hope that we and WVU will be a part of this discussion process. Thank you. John? I want to echo Tom's comment regarding the Mason-Dixon Historical um, Parks 250th anniversary and rededication. It was a, uh, there was a lot of time put in by JR, by Pete, um, by our surveyor. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to hatchet his bat last name, Bob Andreas? Andriotti. Andriotti. Bob Andriotti. And just, I, it, I shouldn't have started naming names because there's just a <laughs> lot of people that were involved. But it, uh, it's, it's so many, I was walking in back to the ceremony and a guy from uh, Prosperity PA who just saw it on the internet and decided to come down was walking in. And, uh, you know, I get the same reaction every time someone visits the park for the first time. They're like, wow, I didn't mm -hmm. know this was here. Uh, so uh, those guys have done a lot to, uh, uh, you know, I'm hearing a lot more of those wows. <laughs> so it, I really appreciate all the work that they did. They deserve kudos for all that. Um, 
uh, last Friday we met to canvas for the uh, the road bond election. Uh, so we'll certify the results uh, as soon as we hit our our notification deadline. Uh, but it was pretty interesting, pretty eye opening. I, I did want to note when I'm I'm a numbers guy when I dug into the statistics. I saw where one precinct actually had 55% of people come out. I don't know how that's possible. Yeah. And it wasn't some little one, you know, it was uh, it was one of the precincts at the Star City Town, Town Hall. So, but uh, there, and there were about, you know, almost, uh, if you round, there was almost about 10 or 11 precincts that were in the 90% in regards to being for the amendment. So um, that was pretty impressive showing by our county. And uh, I want to thank all the citizens today. Okay. <clears throat> now, last night was a fireman's meeting, which I attended. Uh, things are going uh, smoothly there. I'm happy to report. Um, yesterday, or excuse me, on Monday, Sean and I had the uh, privilege of being interviewed by uh, Lou Jacobson of PolitiFax, uh, which out of Washington, D.C., and which was interesting. Um, that theater board was last Thursday, as well as the 4-H camp board uh, on Monday. The most important thing that I'd like to leave you with is, please, um, we have had so many calls, emails, letters about Channel 12 not being available on your local news. So here's your opportunity. Um, you must go to the FCC webpage, the website, and leave comment, I hope positive, uh, regarding the change to make us not a subsidiary uh, of Pittsburgh, but so that we can receive the local news channel of Channel 12, which is WBOY particularly, uh, which would involve DirecTV and DISH. Right. DISH and DirecTV have both indicated to us, as well as everybody else, that it's already a signed and sealed delivered. They will broadcast Channel 12 if this designation is changed. So the only way this designation can be changed is by positive input mm -hmm. by the citizens. So if you actually want to and submit an email, we can possibly forward it, but it would be easier for you to go to this FCC website and leave your comment with them. Thank you. I know it's uh, something that myself, I have actually discontinued uh, Comcast because it might be my own minor protest, but if this is taken up, I will be getting a dish. So, <laughs> Move to recess till 1118. Second. And properly moved and seconded to recess till 1118. Favor? Aye. Aye. Move to come out of recess. Second. It's been properly moved and second to come out of recess. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Move to certify the election results for the road bond amendment. Second. It's been properly moved and second for certification. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anything else, Carrie, that we had to officially say? Or? No. Okay. Move to adjourn. Second. Been properly moved and second for adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. We We're adjourned. are adjourned.